Welcome everyone to another Thursday evening live stream. Bitcoin has got many people on edge and the sideways market has been chopping traders up. So let's take a look at a few things. And honestly, guys, I do have a bit of a warning, uh, something to watch for in the Bitcoin chart. Um, luckily, as traders, for us who are trading, um, we can play and make money either direction. So just going to go over a few things to be cautious of moving forwards. Um, as always, I'll start zoomed out to the weekly chart to get a feel for the overall market here and work my way into some more degen timeframes, looking at the five minute stuff like that. Watch, uh, look at some levels I'm watching, look at some of my favorite indicators and that sort of thing, and maybe even find some scalp opportunities. So with that, let's hop on over to the uh, weekly chart here. You guys know I always start my streams with this and I just want to uh, turn a couple of things off here. Something has uh, got my attention that has me a little bit concerned about the trend for Bitcoin right now, honestly. Um, I know overall, I am still very bullish. I do not think the top is in for the market, but just as far as looking for, um, you know, a decent long term pullback here or midterm, I should say, um, there's a few things concerning me right now. Um, you'll notice that I don't have any wicks on my weekly chart right now, just so I can see structure a little bit better. Um, a lot of you probably already know where I'm going with this, but just looking at structure, let's look at this. We have our high, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. This is what I've been quite vocal about that if as long as we hold this level, I'm going to be bullish. But something that has got my attention right now is that we, because since we obviously set this higher high, that's a confirmed higher low. We technically got a close above this level as all as well. Uh, making this my higher low and something that's not great right now. I mean, it's it's good to see that we have reclaimed that level at least, um, but just this bearish structure in general, uh, as far as a bearish break goes, you guys know I'm posting it in the Discord all the time. Um, my favorite setups, those Stuber Fib setups, that's the exact type of setup that I love shorting on a five minute chart, for example. Uh, a one hour chart, a 15 minute chart. That's basically um, kind of my favorite type of structure break because you can often get a nice tight inv invalidation. Um, so if I just turn on the the uh, wicks back onto the chart here with uh, using my indicator here. So since we have that bearish structure break, let's just pull a fib from where we topped out to where we bottomed out. And um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look where we ended up finding resistance guys. Uh, that is picture perfect candle wicks filling the Stuber fib and the candle bodies are seeing a rejection here. Um, this is something I haven't really talked about, but I did bring it up in the chat yesterday. Honestly, that's concerning to me. Um, it, again, it, it's nice and tight as an invalidation. Like if we, you know, start closing above these candle bodies here, like I was quite vocal about this last week, if we close weekly candle bodies above 71.5, I'm going to be very bullish again. But I have to be the bearer of uh, caution, <laughs> the, the voice of caution here. Um, as far as shorter time frames, I love shorting that. That is my, I mean, there's a reason we call it the Stuber Fib setup, right? That's my ideal setup. Um, so yes, and, and, and I'm not saying it works out every time. So yes, even though I take it on the five minute all the time, yeah, it loses trade sometimes. Um, but that's where we have these invalidation levels or even uh, just closes above structure, then that kind of invalidates it, right? So on the long term, it's hard for me to be bullish on the macro trend, you guys. Um, you know, I'm generally quite bullish uh, this whole trend upward, basically. Uh, but I do have to be cautious about these pullbacks because something that is a little bit scary about that is um, actually, let me check something. Um, yeah, like something like this, you know, we did get this and we did get that, you know, we came back up. <clears throat> if we turn on the wicks there, yeah, we never did close above. So that wouldn't have been invalidated. I mean, that's a perfect example of it happening right there, right? Uh, on the weekly, that was a beautiful Stuber Fib short setup. And that's kind of what I'm looking at right now, right? So just something to be a little bit cautious of that maybe we will end up seeing these lower levels down here, right? 
Um, on top of that, this white trend line that I have going to the upside here, um, you know, when as far as every week I talk about this, when I'm looking at breaking out of trend lines, I want three exact touch points and we have that. And now we're kind of approaching this level again. If we start closing candle bodies below this, that's just, you know, a little more confirmation that, yeah, even though we might get some sort of a bounce, uh, we will, well, we're going to have heavy resistance to break, right? And again, that can all be invalidated very easily. Uh, but as it stands right now, that structure has me quite concerned. I, I can't lie, you guys. Um, I, I love being a moon boy, but, um, you know, right now I'm very open to the idea of playing shorts just like I am longs. Um, for the last probably month or so, I've been very bullish heavy, at, like just uh, favoring long setups versus short. Right now, I honestly don't have, um, I don't really have a preference the last few days my preference has been shorting and that's basically going for again looking at this kind of a structure break right uh, as a sorry i had that mapped out wrong actually or i think i had it mapped out on the 15 minute um but even as far as uh the five minute chart guys this is exactly what i'm talking about right i talk about this structure all the time uh we have our highs here we set a higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and look what happens as soon as that was broken. Yeah, I know it's very micro analyzing here, but that's, I mean, that's where our structure broke and just look how beautiful that played out. Uh, that's where I look for those Stuber Fib setups, right? Something like that. It basically came right up to my invalidation Fib, which you guys know I always say that I, I like to leave some wiggle room. That's just a ballpark. Um, but even even if you would have got stopped out and then saw that uh, that failed break, that's also that's another thing, right? Just a bit of a swing fail there, where we saw the wicks go above, but we got rejected at this horizontal resistance here. So just a couple of things going for that, and that's where I started leaning short. Also, just that we had all this untested space, right? Generally speaking, when we see those aggressive moves and you have no consolidation on the way up. If you start losing whatever consolidation levels that you had, um, well, look what happens. We just nuked right through that whole range again. So, um, yeah, that's just a, a perfect example of it playing out on the five minute. And that is basically what has me so concerned about this weekly chart. Um, there's just no denying it that that's exactly what we have right here. So, I mean, hate to be the bearer of bad news. And again, it can be invalidated. Uh, it can be invalidated quite easily, but uh, just a few things to watch for. We obviously do have some support there, but um, I, I don't like this structure break. Um, we still, I mean, one good thing is, yes, Bitcoin has done a great job building support on the way up. Uh, we have this daily buy trend on the trend collection indicator. Um, it's actually above these lows that I have back here. So yes, we do have support from some indicators as well. Um, but, you know, there's just a few things to be cautious of there because another thing, and I hate to say it, um, quite often when we see those structure breaks, I mean, where's the bottom of the range? <laughs> Technically, um, you know, after... Um, basically since we bottomed out, right? Where, where is our full range? If this is where we were topping out right now, I'm not saying this is probable. I, I want to make this very clear before I say what I'm going to say. I don't think this is probable, but it's absolutely a possibility that since we lost this structure, if this trend is to reverse for whatever reason, something happens in the economy, um, something happens or just, you know, the generally speaking, markets get pretty boring going into summer. So maybe just a lack of interest as well as losing that structure, um, you know, maybe waiting uncertainties with the election and stuff like that. I, I think that the market's going to recover quite well before the election personally, but just some things to watch out for just any sort of black swan event is that we very well may end up testing you know same thing what i like to see on a five minute chart generally speaking charts look the same whether it's a weekly chart a five minute chart um whatever kind of chart you want to look at i mean it would be totally normal if you ignored all these big numbers on the side and just looked at chart structure it would be so normal to break a high like this and then pull back to the seven eight six eight eight six again 
just since it's such a large time frame i'm not saying it's probable but it's absolutely a possibility and just to uh you know put it to you know a little bit of a visual test here look in what happened last market cycle and you guys i can promise you i was in the market uh well <laughs> since right here and um i can promise you it did not feel like we were gonna drop down like that and yes it was covid again black swan event right something happened and we pushed down to that chart level whether that was totally news based or if it was gonna happen for whatever other reason <clears throat> maybe it just got um you know happened a little bit quicker because of covid whatever all i'm saying is this structure it did happen and it absolutely felt like that was not a possibility when bitcoin was trading uh you know up around 11 12 even closer to 14,000 i never dreamt that bitcoin was going to dump back down towards 4k i thought it was bull market on at these levels right so um when you start losing those structure levels and actually let's look at what this structure level did um <laughs> actually that's that's wild i've i've never looked into it like this before but high higher high higher low higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, gets broken, boom, nuke down to the Stuber Fib. So again, guys, it, it, I'm, I just, I can't stress that enough. I don't think it has to happen by any means, but it's something to be cautious of that it could absolutely happen. Um, I can't tell you how the market felt back in this market cycle, but same thing, we got very close to, uh, you know, filling that Stuber Fib. We, or we got very close to the 786 there again i wasn't in the market here but i can almost promise you that the people up here never thought that they'd see bitcoin down here again so just something to consider moving forward that basically what i'm saying anything is possible right um i more so like trading the shorter time frames anyways but again structure is structure and I have to take that serious that if this is the type of short setup that I would take on any other time frame, I have to consider that it's a possibility that it would play out that way, right? Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about that theory. Um, I wonder if you guys think it's probable, even possible at all, or uh, do you think that's just unrealistic? And I'm not going to be a capo, you know, and say, oh, Bitcoin is going down to 27K. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying, you know, if we start losing some of these important support levels, um, just at that point, don't be surprised. It's premature to call it like that, but just saying it's something to watch for. <clears throat> uh, totally possible. Uh you're expecting it, but won't complain if it doesn't happen. Yeah, honestly, that's kind of me too. Um, <clears throat> part of me feels like it's full on bull market on, but just with that weekly structure break, I'm open to the idea. And I don't know what the media is. If this happened, <laughs> if this happened and we drop to these levels, I am very curious to see why, why it happened in the news, you know, what they're going to blame on that. You heard it here first if it does happen. <laughs> yeah, charts don't lie. Exactly. They can say whatever in the news, and uh, that's the thing, though, right? We have to wait and see what structure does. I mean, if we, yeah, we got this bearish break. If we end up breaking some, you know, lower low, lower low, we end up breaking that trend. Okay, well, then everything's changed again, right? But I'm just looking at it for what it is right now at this level and all those different examples I've showed it on even on different time frames now. Um, it's just a possibility, right? Especially if, uh, actually, let me just delete this and make a little ray here. If we, here, I'll make this one green just so we know it's bullish if we close above that. I will lock that in place. And the red here, if we lose, I mean, that's the thing, right? Even though we reclaimed this level, we're losing it again. And even if you zoom in a little more, I mean, this candle doesn't close until Sunday evening. But again, we're losing that same type of structure, right? Yes, this is very micro analyzing every single candle type of a thing but it does have that break above that's technically the higher low and uh we're losing it again so there's a couple things that have me concerned about this trend you guys 
Um, I do have a short in. I I took a short yesterday. Uh, where were we? Up here with this structure break I talked about earlier. Uh, I even got in a little bit late. I think it was closer to down. It, yeah, what is it? I'd have to check. I have to bring up my phone and check what my position's at. Um, but yeah, that's basically when I took it. If we break above this range here, I'm just going to close it. Because when I zoom out to the 15 minute chart here, um, there is the possibility of this Stuber Fib here. I'm going to actually remove all my drawings, just map it out again. Uh, so basically looking at the same type of structure, right? Um, let me just... Uh, here's obviously our lowest low. Our low before that is right here. What's the highest point uh, between our low and our lower low? This would be our lower high. And since we broke above that, that's when I start looking for those pullbacks to my Stuber Fibs, right? And I personally like to have wicks on when I pull them, but I'm going to pull from the very bottom, our lowest low, to where we've topped out so far, and I'm waiting for that pullback into the Stuber Fib. Notice we got it, and that's why I mentioned in the Discord earlier uh, that I was taking a hedge long. So basically, we break out of this range. Uh, I'm going to assume that at that point we're kind of targeting some of these levels, so I'm, at that point, I'm just going to end up closing the rest of my short position and letting the hedge long take over. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think we're going to bounce here? I don't care which way we go right now, personally, because... Um, here, actually, let me just do this structure again here. So this is where <clears throat> we basically broke our downtrend. This is where we broke our uptrend. Map that out red because that's our bearish break. This is our bullish break. So <clears throat> that kind of makes sense why I pulled that as our current range. And obviously my Fibonacci goes from wick to wick but I like to turn off the wicks for looking at market structure. Um, so this is basically the range I'm looking at, right? So if I'm taking along from these this area, which I had mentioned earlier that out of the middle of this pocket, I'm taking a hedge long. Um, so, you know, we get to that level. <clears throat> I will definitely be looking at taking some profits because the way I look at any trade is I'm trading the range that I'm trading, right? Um, I'm not looking at a home run, hey, this is the bottom, we're going to 100k from here. I'm not looking at it that way. I treat all of my positions, the first half of all of my positions, I basically treat like a scalp. Um, so in this case, this is the range I'm looking at for my hedge long. So being I'm entering in these levels, uh, these are basically my TP fibs. Not financial advice, obviously. I'm already in a short, and this is a hedge long but i'm i'm leaning towards the idea of us bouncing at this point um if we do end up getting that bounce that i'm looking for um yeah so i'd basically be looking to close a quarter at tp1 a quarter at tp2 and then hopefully catch uh you know hopefully catch that home run with the other half of my position but not banking on it right um the reason uh, a lot of people often ask about this 214 fib that's kind of a random number um, basically that's me looking for the opposite 786, right? So if I'm looking for resistance, I'm pulling top to bottom instead of bottom to top. So I'm pulling my fib from up here to where, uh, where we bottomed out. So this wick right here, get that back out of the way. I'll even get rid of these other ones. Oh, actually I needed that. <laughs> uh, so you can see that this 214 take profit fib it is close to basically just front running the 786 resistance. So um, this is kind of where I'd be open to the idea of looking for shorts again on this kind of a range. So just a couple levels to watch. You know, a lot of people are going to be getting bullish as hell as we trade to this. But technically, that's where we had our bearish break. And that's a bearish Stuber Fib right there. Again, doesn't have to play out. But invalidations up, you know, nice and close. Whereas for the long invalidation of long in here is technically, you know, <laughs> way down here. Um, that's just not good risk reward. That's why trading breakouts is so dangerous because you just don't have those nice tight invalidations like you do on reversals like this, right?
<laughs> You'll sell the husband if we get that big dip. <laughs> Keeping the dog, obviously. Good, good. Um, I think we fail 69-2. Yeah, kind of the top there. Yeah, I think that was a rejection there. Um, that would be well below minor costs. Also, we have ETFs now. If we do nuke, sure, it would be bought up fast. That's kind of the thing, right? Like, that's why I don't want to say that this... Actually, what I hate to say is this cycle's different um, because every market cycle does have bigger players involved, right? And every market cycle... It, it takes more money to act the same, uh, basically. The only way to get a bull market is to have way more money coming in from a bigger group of players, right? Um, so at this point, yeah, it, it just to get healthy price action, at this point, since there is more Bitcoin in circulation, uh, the market cap is high, um, there's way more money in the space in general. Uh, it takes a lot more money to move the market as it normally has moved in previous market cycles, right? Um, but you're right. Like, it, it does not have to dump towards these mass, you know, these huge dumps on the longer time frame, like I was talking about as a possibility. Uh, totally agree with you. It doesn't have to happen anymore. There is bigger players involved. Maybe they wouldn't let it happen. Or maybe they are exactly the reason why they're able to make it happen or something like that, right? Fill those those orders at those levels. Because like I said, generally speaking, it doesn't really matter what time frame uh, charts like to act the same. But yes, I, I, I am curious to see. Honestly, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Um, I never really considered this bearish super fib. And honestly, I'm kind of disappointed that I never thought of this uh, as we traded back up here um but now that it's here i don't know i think it's becoming more and more clear that it just looks like a rejection but again happy to be wrong happy to have it get um you know invalidate this theory but um just a few things to watch for right Even if we nuke to 25k or some random low number due to a crisis black swan, the ETF on BTC would help. But if Ethereum's ETF got dropped after that, it would revive the charts and bring back the bull in V-shape bounce, I'd like to think. And that's, a, that's another thing. That's a very good point. Um, something I want to be clear about if we do uh, get this random if we fucking end up doing whatever we do and then absolutely nuke to these levels oh i think she's gonna be bought up fast uh even if we dip below it and do something like that i think it's gonna be very much so um v-shape and onward kind of a thing um i i very strongly believe that just well just like back here right same type of thing um well, yesterday, I don't know if you were uh, in the Bitcoin chat there, but we were referring to things as uh, Berkshiring, <laughs> uh, since that was a recent thing. Um, basically, what I would be looking at if we did end up testing these FIB levels, I think it would be very short-lived, and I think it would be one hell of an opportunity that a lot of people would be scared to take, and everybody loves getting bearish at those levels, just like in the opposite way, love getting bullish. Um but I think a lot of people would be scared at these levels, and then I think they'd end up FOMOing back in, you know, as we start trading up at all time highs again. Rather than buying the dip, a lot of people would be selling down there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's my thought <laughs> on the longer time frame, anyways. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn off this bearish. Actually, what I like to do sometimes, since I have the bearish uh, set up here right now, if we do get some kind of a bounce here. Um, I just want to have this resistance pocket on my radar, basically, uh, just showing that there is a Stuber fib there, as well as our structure right there. But yeah, this is basically what I'm looking at right now. I'm hoping to see this Stuber fib bounce right here. This is a 15 minute chart. That's a long time for me, guys. You guys better be proud of me stepping up off the five minute it's scary i don't like this <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, if we get down to those uh, fibs, like honestly, if we start breaking serious structure levels, I'm just going to be putting limit orders down there and hoping to catch some sort of a fishing order at crazy cheap prices because, yeah, it will not last. That's the kind of thing where you'll see Bitcoin jump like 50% in a couple of hours. When you see a violent reaction like that, you know there's a good chance it's uh, it's bull market on from there. Yeah, let's get back to some realistic time frames here, hey? Um, so even just uh, microanalyzing on the five minute here, just looking as far as some sort of an order block, uh, where did we end up? What sent us above our resistance here? Let's make a box on this red candle here. And look where we ended up finding support here. Very micro analyzing again, but look at this. Here we had our low, lower, low. There's our structure break. Boom. I think uh, as something I want to mention, guys, is like obviously when I say like, hey, there's a bullish structure break. <laughs> obviously, that's a very small range on a five minute chart. That's again, we're not shooting for a hundred thousand dollar bitcoins based off something like that um i think the the main reason so many people have a hard time trading shorter time frames is just that you know at this point had you entered a long position based on this like i would already be considering taking some profits just because there's potential resistance up here um just as far as the start of my position right but like i said i'm more of a scalper myself but uh i think it's important to remember trade what time frame you're trading right uh, if I'm trading a five minute chart, you know, within 10 or so candles, um, if I haven't taken profits yet, I'm considering downsizing. Um, then, you know, if I'm playing a 15 minute chart, obviously I give a little more leeway just to remember what time frame I'm playing. So more like 15 or 10, 15 minute candles, right? If I'm playing the hourly, then you have more time, right? Um, <clears throat> But yeah, um, basically, I think the hardest part about trading, and I talk about this all the time, is taking profits. All, all, most all of us can get into winning positions, but um, as far as actually clicking that take profit button, it's hard to do. I promise you it's hard to do. If anyone tells you it's not, they're lying. It's so hard to not be greedy in this market. That, that's where that's why I love having something structured like a Fibonacci, right? Then at least it shows me my range levels. That's why I know, you know, if I end up getting up towards that Fibonacci, the 0.5 Fib of this range, I am absolutely going to be downsizing my position because um, it's a structured level, right? I love to take profits. I've perfected it. Just set a plan and stick to it. Used to lose more trying to get more. 100%. Um, that's the thing because a lot of times, the thing is when I'm entering positions more so, like especially when tra trading uh, trend lines, looking for swing fails and stuff like that, you're watching levels and uh, waiting for the reaction. With taking profits, it's the opposite, right? Like if you hit your levels, you want it to take those profits because you might get a reaction that you don't like from that level and all of a sudden you missed half your profits. So even if you would have just ended up taking half your profits or a quarter of your profits, you might have made more than when you end up being scared then and you update your stop loss too soon because you want to make sure you get some sort of profits when you could have just closed a quarter of your position and kept your stop loss at break even and not had to jumble around a bunch of positions and just be able to let it run and be very comfortable, right? Um, so you're 100% sticking to your plan, set those levels. Um, I, I think setting orders on take profits is quite important. I do on at least half my position. Like I said, I kind of... Um, more reactive to the second half of my position you know i see structure breaks stuff like that and i consider taking more nibbles off the table kind of a thing but um, i think it's important to i don't know secure yourself quickly especially when using high leverage on low time frames like myself um it, it's good to protect yourself as soon as possible <laughs>
another thing I'll do, like, um, you know, uh, using the indicators, right? Um, I use them for, you know, ways to help me find my entries, <clears throat> uh, just as confluence and stuff like that, but also on the opposite end as well, uh, looking at taking profits, right? Um, like, let's say we end up trading up here a little bit and we set a lower W. I would just think that, hey, you know what? There's actually a chance that we are uh, still in a downtrend and we're going to get another lower high reversal point. Um, not saying it has to stick, but it's just a little bit of a warning. I'm basically, when I get in a position, I'm looking for reasons to uh, take my risk down a notch because I trade risky enough as it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, what do we got going on? Some longer time frames. Um, you know, we have that Stuber Fib on the hourly as well. Good to see. Ooh, not only that, but it has this reversal warning here. I never saw that earlier, but um, uh, that wouldn't have changed anything. We pulled back into the pocket. Um, that's nice confluence to see on the hourly chart, though. Our structure break was actually lower on the one hour. That or that. I mean, technically, this little green little block there is technically closed a little bit lower than over here. Actually, you can see this support flip to resistance sent us down a little more. Then we broke that and then we mooned basically... Well, again, just looking for where did this trend reverse? Um, that would have been up here, right? Uh, so let's just pull a fib. Oh, well, I think you guys already know where I'm going with this. But if this was our low and this is our next lower low, that's our lower high. Let's pull a Stuber fib. I think it's obvious where this is going. Boom, had you entered a short in this in this level here so that's something i didn't even notice when i took my short but that structure break happened at that level so even more confluence to that short yesterday invalidation way up here so not even close to being stopped out had you taken it so like i said structure works the same on every time frame right yes it's gonna you know any type of trading strategy is obviously going to have its losses as well. But just as far as, uh, you know, referring back to that weekly chart and why I'm taking that serious is because I've showed you examples on the five minute, the one hour, the weekly, and they're all kind of doing the same thing, right? It takes longer to happen and people lose their patience, especially in crypto. Um, but definitely some food for thought there, you guys. actually going to save the chart like this um let's see shorter time frames here let's get back into the five minute let's see what are some other tools saying here what's the trend collection saying it does have a buy signal one thing uh for myself personally i don't give too much credit to each individual signal when i'm looking at um, indicators i like to confirm things with structure first and then look for indicators to match up. And basically one thing that I love to look for is which way things are trending. And obviously right now our buy signals are trending to the downside. So I don't necessarily like taking each individual signal all too serious. Um, the fact that they're trending down like this is a little bit concerning. Uh, W's are trending to the downside. That's a little bit concerning. So that's why I still have part of my short running, right? Um... Let's look at some longer time frames. See, we have the sell signal on the four hour, but I don't uh, I don't take that sell signal. To, it played out beautifully. Honestly, I usually look at it on shorter time frames, uh, but that sell signal is technically higher. So it did see a reaction, but we're already trying to find support, right? So uh, I'd be interested to see, you know, if we get back above that and set a higher buy signal, um, then that might be an early warning sign that this trend is going to reverse back to the upside, right? But for now, um, there is definitely some warnings there. Um, 
Actually, the 15 is what I was uh, taking the trade off of earlier. So let's see what some of these indicators are saying on the 15 here. Ooh, pretty strong sell trend here. It was a higher sell, but I mean, it's been holding as resistance. W's are trending to the downside. Um, auto charting tools, you know, we have the June open above us. Uh, that's been respected a lot throughout. I mean, you can see it acting as resistance here. When we got above it, nice pump, came back, tested it as support, basically. Um, that has been a very respected level the last, oh, I think, few weeks I've been watching that one. Um, the auto charting tools picking up lower, low, lower, low, lower highs, lower highs. So that's definitely trending to the downside for now. Um, liquidation levels. Uh, this goes to, oh, actually, this is interesting, guys. Uh, let me get rid of trend collection. Let me pull up that Stuber Fib that I had set up for the reason I was in that position. Um, Actually, no, let me pull that the opposite way. We already know why I'm in this position and we know why I had that resistance box mapped out earlier, pulling the resistance fibs. Look how the high leverage liquidity levels are right around the Stuber fib pocket. So just a little additional confluence um, why I think that a hedge long here wasn't such a bad idea. Also notice we grabbed this liquidity down here, right? Um, that gold color, that's the higher leverage longs and shorts. Um, so to see us grab that liquidity in the Stuber Fib pocket um, with a reversal warning, there's just a few reasons why I wanted to be in a bit of a hedge long there. And yeah, if we end up turning this whole thing into a big range like the Fibonacci's that I've had pulled here, um, it would make a lot of sense that we'd go up to that Stuber Fib pocket that I warned you about, grab that liquidity perfectly, and then see a reversal. Not saying it has to happen, but absolutely something to look forward to see how the price reacts to those levels. Um, <clears throat> let me actually just make that fib pocket once again. Get rid of that. That's still good. And let's get the original fib back up there. Yeah, I've been really liking using these uh, this liquidation tool lately. Um, so often the price loves to grab that high leverage liquidity. There's actually even some a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, so often when you start getting close to those levels, you can almost guarantee that it's going to go just a little bit further and grab that liquidity. That's where you get those swing fails and uh, stuff like that, right? Um, there's a lot of people who set way too tight of stop losses, who would be setting shorts, you know, kind of in this level if we approach it. And their stop loss is going to be just a few dollars higher than this resistance here when that's actually kind of the liquidity grab we're looking for when looking for a swing fail. Um, a lot of people have their stop losses too tight, right? And that's where, I mean, you can see that there's liquidity levels above those, uh, so close to those resistance levels, right? Close to this level here, we got liquidity. Close above this resistance up here, we got even more liquidity. So yeah, I'm interested to see if we get some sort of a bounce off this level. Um. I can't find a smaller Stuber fib in here. Sometimes I like to find, you know, a fib pull inside a fib pull. Um, this isn't actually the structure break that I would look for myself because we haven't, like this is zoomed into the five minute again. Um, you know, we had this low here and our next lower low is here. So technically our lower high is up here. So that's a downtrend we never really broke, so I can't really pull a Stuber Fib. I mean, we could still just look for that reaction off of a 786-886 Fib pocket. It just doesn't have a break of a trend that I like to see when I'm looking for those positions. But like I said, the 15-minute absolutely does. Just 
just get everything mapped out here again. Um, um yeah, <laughs> yeah, fibception, absolutely. Um, which indicator is that? I'm still learning them. Um, that's the liquidations tool. Uh, if you go to indicators, uh, invite only, uh, MDX trend master liquidations. And then, yeah, it has this legend that tells you, uh, like how much leverage and where they, where their liquidity pockets are basically. I haven't been using it all too much until just the last couple of weeks, but I've been uh, really liking using it. I think that's an important one, honestly. Um, yes, I believe I am just using the default settings. Sensitivity 5. I guess that's probably the only thing that would... Um, I think that was default, though. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of things in the indicators and stuff saying that this trend is, you know, uh, obviously to the downside here. But um, just the way that we have this structure break, like I said, a trade setup isn't going to work out every time. But uh, generally speaking, I take a Stuber Fib pull when I uh, when I see them myself personally. Especially since I already have a short open. I mean, I'll swing at a hedge long uh, I like to chase the 50 and 100 X peeps with the liquidity indicator because the market maker does so a lot absolutely right that high leverage stuff is going to be the quickest and easiest grab generally speaking right You get the people who missed the short up here and get super bearish as we trade down into the Stuber Fib. People start shorting with high leverage. All of a sudden, they're getting liquidated as we go back up here. Rinse and repeat. Don't get me wrong. We lose this range, and my long would be stopped out in that case. And then my short takes over, right? So I don't really care which way we go right now. <laughs> buy high, sell low. Yeah. And then eventually we're going to have buy high, sell higher season, but we're just not there yet. <laughs> Yeah, you're trying to give it away, right? The poor market makers, you just, like, you feel bad for them sometimes, so you got to give some back. They're providing such a service and all. Uh, yeah, guys, um, today has really, this weekly chart has really got my attention right now. I'm not going to lie, that's, uh, that's an interesting chart. We will see. See uh, how gentle the crypto gods are feeling. Anyways, guys, um, I don't think I really have anything else I wanted to go over. Um, mainly just the that caution I wanted to throw out about the overall trend and just kind of what I'm looking at on the shorter time frames here. Why I'm taking the positions that I am and stuff like that. I think like the thing is, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love these indicators. I don't, I basically, well, I actually don't use any other indicators anymore. And I just think they look sexy as fuck. But um, I think at the end of the day, understanding market structure is just the most important thing you can do for yourself. Market structure first, indicators for confluence is kind of the way I see things. But teach their own. If you have a back-tested uh, type of strategy that works and you don't need to know market stru structure, then you know what? Everyone has their own ways of trading, absolutely. Um, 
but yeah I, I find that market structure is just such a nice way to be able to spot these tight invalidations right uh, even somewhere like this when we had this break here especially with such a nice violent move to the upside like that you finally lose this structure like that that's such a tight invalidation that honestly i'm not necessarily waiting for a stuber fib setup in that kind of a, a setup or ladder in, you know, put in part of a position on the candle close down here. Yes, it is all the way down here after this break, and maybe we do find support here, but just for the uh, possibility that that's obviously, actually, well, something I wanna do here, just looking at the possibility, right? If we're looking at this as a trend reversal, which we did end up getting all the way down to my Stuber Fibs, right? Um, Let's just see the invalidation at that time uh, when we would have pulled down like so. Invalidation would have been, I would say, just kind of somewhere up here. Uh, let's just look at what kind of risk reward we had on that. You know, entering at even down here where that candle closed to where our Stuber Fibs were approximately, where our stop would be, and you're looking at a four to one risk reward, right? Actually, even further, if you're going for the 886, four and a half to one. So yeah, those are those nice trade setups, right? If you can actually get your uh, get back up into the Stuber Fib, for example, and you get your average entry closer to the 886, playing 886 to 886. I mean, that's some very nice risk reward, right? Well, in that case, if you hit that, I mean, you're looking at closer to 11 or 12 to one. So um, yeah, you can find some very nice trades if you understand market structure like that. Um, five minute bounce. Is that what I'm hearing? Ooh, you know, this would be, <laughs> this is going to be very micro analyzing you guys again, going for this little, this little break here. Let's turn our fibbies back on, go from low to high. Eh, we could come down a little lower yet. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to call this a Stuber. It, it kind of is, but it's obviously a very small range, right? Um, that's another thing you got to understand, right? Playing whatever range you're playing. If you're entering based on this type of range, you're taking profits on this kind of range, right? So if you want to move bigger than from here to here, or even, you know, hitting TP2 would be great. If that's not enough for you, then you're just playing too small of a range, right? It's not the strategy's fault. But yeah, um, anyways, legends, I think that's about all I wanted to go over today. So hopefully you guys did find this stream useful. Uh, for those of you watching this on my YouTube channel a little bit later, actually for those of you, I don't know if there's some new faces around here. If you guys weren't aware, I do have my own YouTube channel. I do some shorter videos and stuff and actually uh, some interesting developments coming up soon. I might be doing some live streams on a different uh, public YouTube channel at some point. I'll keep you guys posted with that if it happens here. Um, but yeah, other than that, be sure to subscribe, uh, to my channel. I do post these streams there. Uh, they're usually uploaded there a little bit faster than they are in the Academy, but they'll obviously be in the Academy as well soon. Um, and yeah, anyone on my YouTube channel, if you're checking this out a little bit later and you're interested in my favorite indicators, plus access to the VIP discord with live streams, such as these put on by not only myself, but a handful of very other, uh, of other very knowledgeable traders in the group there's a 10 percent discount link down below uh with that i'm out stay safe my friends peace kind of looks like the market's trying to come back to life so <laughs> why don't we just bring up the chart again I've got more discipline than you.
I guess. I, I shouldn't say I'm not disciplined. I just love trading degenerate dime frames and stuff. <laughs> But again, it doesn't really matter, right? Market structure is market structure. Um, as long as you have a plan, that's the main thing. If you can trade, you should be able to trade any time frame. Honestly, I'm just uncomfortable being in the market for too long of a time. Maybe it's because I use higher leverage and stuff, but I, I would just rather get in, get out, at least with, like, like I said earlier, half my position. Um, and go from there but because i always like to leave some run i always want to catch a runner but you just can't expect it right yeah basically this is what i'm hoping for TP1, TP2, maybe not like that, obviously. Maybe we'll do something like, uh, something like that or something, but who knows. Uh, but anyways, that's kind of where I'm looking at taking profits off this one. And if structure scares me for whatever reason, I'll uh, close more earlier. But uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now, as far as this 15 minute setup goes. Oh, nice cause. Good, I need a degenet around. And that's the thing, right? Uh, honestly, I feel like most people should trade larger time frames. I think most people are better at swing trading because you can set it and forget it a little easier. Like trading the shorter time frames is very reactive. It's uh, you got to be able to set orders quick or make your decision quick or at least you know, be ready for those setups. That's why a lot of times I'll post things like, hey, here's a Stuber setup I'm watching for. It doesn't have to happen because, you know, structure can change very quickly. And then maybe I'm looking at a totally different fib pull, right? Um, it changes very quickly on shorter time frames. And uh, if you're not, you know, a candle or two ahead of the game and you're not ready to take that position or, or you don't have those limits set, um, then it can really become an issue right like if you're trying to trade a one minute chart for example if you hesitate for a minute or two i mean your trade might be gone even if you were correct about it it might be gone um oh, did it get boring again <laughs> what's the one minute doing be proper proper degens here let's get the 15 second going come on let's <laughs> let's get the five second going here we go leggies let's really watch it live here here's our current lower high of the trend let's just chase the trend for a while <laughs> for a few minutes here this makes it more exciting, right? It might scramble your emotions, but it's more fun. So then basically if we close a candle below this level, then I'd be looking at dropping my yellow line to here. Because current, this is a great way to show uh, market structure in real time, actually. Here we got our low, lower low, lower high. <laughs> yeah, how do you guys feel about this? I am not saying to trade the five second, by the way. I've tried it, quite honestly, but again, you might miss your entry within a candle or two, right? So if you don't pull the trigger within five seconds, you might have missed your entry. But as far as showing how market structure looks, this is a great, great way to show it. Actually, do we have, 
we might have technically a little green guy in there, which means low, lower, low, lower, high. Uh, we might have a super fib here. Let's get the wicks on. Look at that. Even the five second. <laughs> Seven, eight, six entry. 0. 0.5. There's your TP1. Told you these things work on every time frame. Who's saying you can't trade a five second? <laughs> Oh, there she goes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We're, we're nuking. It feels like we're nuking. So then as far as structure goes, right, we have a new lower low. So lower high. of this current trend here. <laughs> DGen is way more excited, but I think I would lose everything maybe one day. Oh yeah, exactly. It is definitely, definitely not for everybody. But just look how well that market structure gets respected. Boom, there's our lower high. Holy man, this looks volatile as fuck. Oh, that's funny. Who would have thought that I'd be uh, given a lesson on the five second chart here today? I mean, we should have seen it coming. You guys should have known it would come to this. <laughs> um, so yeah here's our current low low lower low lower high oh oh, oh look at that broke some structure here So if I was, <laughs> again, trading the five seconds a little ridiculous, but if this was a typical, like, you know, five minute, 15 minute chart kind of thing, I'd be looking at that as my structure break, a uh, couple different levels I'd be watching to find some sort of a trade setup in that point. Would it, well, I can't even keep up because now there's a couple. <laughs> um, I would have been basically watching, um, where would I have been watching? I guess this level. This level would now be our higher low on this trend, right? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you can't think this fast. Oh, isn't that the truth? Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to attempt to trade this price action. Don't get me wrong, but uh a great live example of how market structure works and how it, you know, every time frame kind of does the same shit. Yeah, exactly. We're just speeding up the learning curve. Good luck cramming it in there. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, in all seriousness, though, uh, I should actually go and start uploading stuff. So I am going to go do that for real now, I think. Zoom out each time. Yeah, zooming out, if you enter on a lower time frame and then you zoom out, so that you can kind of see what's happening on a larger scale. That's where you can kind of start looking for those opposite fib poles or those opposite structure levels or whatever, just so that it's easier to kind of see, hey, maybe I should be taking profits in those levels. Uh, but I would actually say that quite often I like to look at the higher time frame and then zoom in when I'm taking my entry. And then sometimes I zoom in even further when I'm looking for reasons to bail on my position. Um, just because it's like, oh, sometimes you can see something break. Like, let's say I enter on a five minute 
sometimes I'll look at a three minute and if structure breaks a little sooner there, I might consider just downsizing my position, for example, take a little profits or something like that. Um, but yeah, it definitely depends. I mean, it's good to look at several different time frames either way, right? Will it happen on a five second chart? Look at that instant. Like even if it drops, there's an obvious level of interest there, right? It's crazy. Oh, here we go. Might lose her again. That's funny. Okay, after we see if this one holds or not, that's when I'll uh, I'll end up wrapping up here. <laughs> see if it gets invalidated or not. That looks like a reversal waiting to happen. Here we go. Oh, never closed above. This is uh this is a real brain workout here trying to keep up to this. Oh, here we go. Little failed break. Will it hit? Get back to the point 5. Come on, do it. Uh, this is fun. I should do more live streams on the five second chart. <laughs> Try and trade it once. Just get wrecked. Yeah, that's too fast. I ain't trading that. No, that's not even for me. All right, guys. Well, I think I've watched the five second long enough. So, uh, yeah, thank you once again for you guys tuning in. Always appreciate having you guys here every week like this. Always a blast. So... Yeah, this will be, if you missed anything, it will be up on my YouTube channel in probably a couple of hours here. And uh, other than that, it'll also be in the Academy ASAP. So with that, stay safe, my friends. Thank you so much. Peace.